It's The Real News. I'm Aaron Maté. Just a few weeks before he was outed as a rapist and sexual predator, the film producer Harvey Weinstein was asked about his affinity for Israel. Does Israel advocacy play any role in your life, in supporting it at all? I'm, I'm an Israeli in my heart and mind. Okay? I love that country. I love what it stands for. I'm proud to be Jewish. Well, it turns out Weinstein has a closer Israeli connection than he let on. A recent piece in The New Yorker revealed that as part of his campaign to cover up for his crimes and abuses, Weinstein hired a private Israeli intelligence firm called Black Cube to spy on his accusers. A female Black Cube operative posed as a women's rights advocate to meet with Weinstein victim Rose McGowan. The same operative also posed as one of Weinstein's accusers to get a meeting with a journalist who was reporting a story on the allegations. I'm joined now by Max Blumenthal, senior editor of Alternet's Gray Zone Project and the award-winning author of the books Goliath, P Republican Gomorrah, and The 51-Day War. He is co-host of the podcast Moderate Rebels, and his new piece for Alternet is called Why Harvey Weinstein Turned to Israel's Intelligence Services to Suppress His Sex Abuse Accusers. Max, welcome. Uh, let's talk about just the title of your piece. Why did Harvey Weinstein turn to Israel's intelligence services, in this case, this firm, Black Cube? Well, I think the first reason that Weinstein turned to the Israeli firm, Black Cube, which is comprised of former Mossad leadership and operatives um, and Israeli army off former officers, is uh, his connection to the pro-Israel lobby in, in, in the U.S. I mean, those comments that you played at the top of the broadcast uh, were uh, conduct was from an interview that Harvey Weinstein conducted at the Algeminer Annual Gala, where he was given an award on stage with, um, you know, the Holocaust patron saint, the late Elie Wiesel, um, who's also actually been accused of sexual assault in recent days. Um, and... You know, the Alga Minor is a pro-Israel group that's closely connected to another right-wing pro-Israel group, the Simon Wiesenthal Center. Um, it appears to be funded by Sheldon Adelson, the pro-Israel billionaire. And, you know, it, it runs an online publication that routinely demonizes advocates of Palestinian human rights like myself as anti-Semites. Um, uh, Harvey Weinstein has donated at least $100,000 to the Simon Wiesenthal Center, and he's been honored there as well. So he turned, uh, he, he, he's obviously, you know, been connected not only to the pro-Israel lobby, but to Israeli leadership as well through this network. It was Ehud Barak, the former Israeli prime minister, um, defense minister, and accused war criminal who connected Weinstein to Black Cube. Um, Barack obviously knew some of the leadership there. It's not clear if he has used Black Cube. Um, and that was how Weinstein got hooked up with Stella Penn Pachanik, who is By the, the way, this, uh, came, this recommendation for, from Barack came at a fundraiser for Hillary Clinton, right? Well, uh, it may have been that Weinstein invited Barack uh, and the leadership of Black Cube to the fundraiser for Hillary Clinton after it came about. Right, okay. uh, it, it's unclear to me exactly what the circumstances were, but yes, there was an, it, there was an instance where Weinstein invited the director of Black Cube and Ehud Barak to a fundraiser for Hillary Clinton. Of course, Harvey Weinstein's been one of the major bundlers for Hillary Clinton over the years. Right. Um, and so Ronan Farrow, who reported uh, the story uh, for The New Yorker, who broke this news, uh, he writes that, he wrote on Twitter that it was the craziest story I've ever reported in a rare professional experience that made me fear for my safety. Well, I think Ronan Farrow was actually approached by the Black Cube operative, um, along with uh, Ben Wallace, who had been reporting a story for New York Magazine um, on the allegations about Harvey Weinstein's sexual abuse. Um, and another journalist had been approached by this operative. Um, and that's the kind of thing that's chilling to a journalist when you realize that someone you've been talking to isn't who they say they are, and they've actually been working with an agency that has a potentially violent capacity, definitely working with, you know, former, in, you know, former employees of one of the world's uh, most vicious intelligence services that carries out assassinations around the globe. 
um, the operative who was hired um, to infiltrate the lives of Harvey Weinstein's accusers was named Stella Penn Pachanek. Um, I think she's 32 or 33 now. She um, was a former Israeli Air Force officer, and she was also an aspiring actress. And it's unclear to me how she got hooked up with Black Cube, but one clue was that she participated in a program with IDC Herzliya, which is an Israeli university, uh, which is heavily invested in Hasbara, or pro-Israel propaganda. And it gives fellowships to students who speak English, who are attractive, who are, you know, capable of a really uh, sophisticated presentation, public speaking presentation, uh, gives them fellowships and trains them in propaganda, and then it sends them abroad. Um, and she may have been pipelined from that program into Black Cube uh, because they were looking for someone who could actually pose as a women's rights advocate. Black Cube set up a fake um, financial firm or an investment firm called Rubin Partners um, that Stella Pachanek was attached to. She posed as Diana Phillip, and she managed to befriend the actress Rose McGowan, who is one of Harvey Weinstein's alleged victims. She had several meetings with McGowan, offered her $60,000 to accept an award from Rubin Partners um, as a women's rights hero. And, you know, this is how she managed to operate. Uh, one of the journalists who met her said she um, posed as one of Harvey Weinstein's victims, in fact. And her job there was to actually find out what the journalists planned to report on Harvey Weinstein. So she was using a velvet glove approach. I mean, this was, you know, the soft edge of Black Cube's subterfuge methods. Uh, but Black Cube operatives have also been involved in trying to destroy the life of uh, Romania's chief um, corruption prosecutor through hacking, through intimidation, and they've been active around the world. Um, it's actually unclear um, what they do, but there is no, it was simply no coincidence that Harvey Weinstein turned to Israel or to former Mossad operatives for a dirty job like this. Right. You know, Max, speaking of you of using former Israeli operatives for dirty jobs, I was reminded when I saw the story of the long history between uh, powerful elements of the U.S., including the government, using Israel uh, for tasks that uh, they don't want to get their hands on themselves uh, for fear of public scrutiny. Speaking especially of Israel's role in Central America in the late 70s and 80s, um, after congressional scrutiny of Reagan's war on the uh, on, on various leftist or uh, peasant-based groups in Central America, the CIA turned to Israel to do its work for it. And actually, even before Reagan, um, when uh, Carter cut off aid to the Somoza regime in Nicaragua, it was Israel that stepped in to keep providing Somoza with support in this fight against the Sandinistas. I'm wondering your thoughts on that parallel there. Yeah, I mean. It it's true, and Israel also armed the Guatemalan military as Ephraim Rios Montt carried out a campaign of genocide against the Mayan population of his country. Um, it did it because of the Boland Amendment, which would have required kind of an executive signature on any covert activity. So the U.S. just turned to Israel. Um, the Saudi Prince Bandar was also a liaison. So the U.S. has this long history of using Israel as kind of a covert proxy. But I think uh, in this case, we need to look at just a different aspect of is the role that Israel plays in the world. And that's kind of the, the, the uh, what I call Israelification, or you could also call it Gazification. Um, Israel is the world's leading expert on um, repression, the violent repression of a rest of indigenous population, the Palestinians. And you know most members of Israeli society have some exposure to the occupation, um, whether it's active participants or indirect participants. Uh, Stella Penn Pachanek, who is the operative that Black Cube used on Harvey Weinstein's behalf, was a former Israeli um, Air Force officer. So, you know, you gain experience in maybe maintaining the surveillance systems around the separation wall or surveilling Palestinians um, as a member of Unit 8200, which is Israel's cyber warfare division, which spies on the whole of Palestinian society and then blackmails Palestinians. Uh, you work in intel Israeli intelligence services 
uh, monitoring Palestinians, maybe not just in the West Bank or the Gaza Strip, but abroad. Um, you develop uh, techniques to do all of this. And then when you leave the military, you need to make a living. And so you have to sell your techniques. And so you set up an intelligence firm and you start selling your techniques to wealthy businessmen and individuals who are involved in illicit and sordid activities. Um, and that's a very good business. Israel has, uh, is, is one of the leading exporters of methods of repression. It's why it's training police forces across the United States as they uh, militarize against their own, uh, you know, against communities that they regard as dangerous and sacrifice zones across the country. So that's really what this case reflects to me, along with uh, kind of the normalization of rape culture in Israel and in the Israeli military where um, according to a 2003 Knesset survey, uh, one out of three women in the Israeli military reported being sexually abused. Hmm. You know, Max, correct me if you think that this is kind of a stretch, but to me, this case also underscores just why solidarity with people around the world is, is important, and it's actually linked to our own lives, because here you have a case where the same techniques that were used to oppress Palestinians helped hone the techniques, and so as you describe, that were used against people like Harvey Weinstein's victims. So in the sense that repression elsewhere can be very much connected to uh, abuses here uh, in ways that we don't normally think of. Yeah, I don't think I could put it any better than that. And I think that's something that you know, everyone who has followed this case needs to recognize um, is that you know, victims abroad, particularly occupied Palestinians, are preyed on by people who can be weaponized by predators at home. And that's what happened in this case. We'll leave it there. Max Blumenthal, senior editor of Alternet's Gray Zone Project, award-winning author of Goliath, Republican Gomorrah, and the 51-Day War, also the co-host of the podcast, Moderate Rebels. Max, thank you. Thanks for having me. And thank you for joining us on The Real News.